Welcome to Prairie Postmodern. I'm your host, Dr. Curtis Collins. This program explores the social, political, and cultural underpinnings of what has come to be known as the postmodern era. That is a condition here in North America which is marked by the advent of space travel, computer technology, and global consumerism. Today on Prairie Postmodern, we meet Saskatchewan Beach artist Chris Campbell Gardner. Gardner's work hinges on acts of concealment. His concern therefore centers around presenting the viewer with a circumstance where he or she can never fully understand all of the information at play. Perhaps, Chris, we could begin with you describing how you conceive and execute your work. My work is about anxiety, and a majority of my process goes into the collection and then later containment of, of those anxious collections. So that can take, that can take time, uh, not just in the collection, but also in the containment aspect of it. Um, initially, when I started the containment project, I was, I was convinced that the works that I had made up until that point, most of the works I'd made up until art school, were, were sort of cursed with failure. I became obsessed with the accuracy of statements and of ideas to the point where it became an obsession that I had to resolve. I became obsessed with articulation and to this day the residue of that sort of follows me. So when I make something I've, I've determined that a collection of anxiety items is dead to me or it's, or it's, it's actually in need of transformation. Um, and then I, I go through a, a very lengthy process of, of encasing those collections through a process that I started many years ago. It's mostly in the form of a box, what I call an anxiety box, an anxiety containment or transformation box. I build it out of wood. Usually it's reclaimed wood from a, a particular context. And then I place the items very ritualistically in the box, and then I close the box. And then I go through a process of stitching shut the box with a cover, using mostly fabrics that are also from reclaimed contexts where the fabric actually has a resonance or a, a particular nature to, to the containment. Once that's done, gesso and paint. Um, paint for me is only the skin. It's the, it's the final seal. So it's not, it's not really normally a formal, a formal sort of aspect to the work. It's, it's more a kind of practical solution. The overall uh, objective of the practice is the transformation of anxiety and particular anxieties as I have decided to collect them and then later contain them. And in this uh, specific work, the, the anxiety box with the, with the word Eric across the front, can you sort of discuss how that came about and, and the execution of it? Well, a majority of my anxiety concealments are, are my own. So I've, I've taken something that caused me anxiety or I, I focused my attention towards um, discovering the anxiety in something. But usually it was particular to myself. Um, in the case of several works, Eric, Eric's anxiety being uh, sort of a focal a focal point, they actually concealed someone else's anxiety. So someone else um, sent me a package of anxious materials that um, was something that they wanted resolved or reconciled. So in the case of Eric's anxiety, I've taken Eric Cameron's anxiety yes. as he decided it, um, and I've gone through my process of concealment. So I received a box in the mail and it was very, very well wrapped, um, many, many layers of wrapping, to, to be honest. And, and then I placed it into a box that had been made specifically for that. And, um, and then I went through my process of, of covering it. There's, there's a braille surface in the object. Um, it's actually surrounding the object. Um, it's, it's not designed to be read. It's not designed to be interpreted. It's not designed to be translated. It's actually inserted as a code um, that's not meant to be decrypted. 
uh, it's what I call a, an incantation or a spell that protects the, the agenda. So uh, Braille is ironic or paradoxical in the sense that normally um, Braille is read by people that can't see. This is a visual art object, so it's, it's designed to be, on top of being a code, also be like uh, a grand paradox. You had mentioned to me before that, in fact, uh, many of these cases are lead-lined? Not all of them, um, but... Um, but I won't point out which pieces do. Um, I never will. Um, the only way that that can be determined is if someone goes to all that trouble um, to actually like x-ray the piece. Now the agenda is I don't want anyone to know what's inside. So short of like destroying a work, ripping it open and revealing the contents, um, there is only one way in and the way in is through x-ray. So Earlier on, I, I realized that this would be a sort of a, a loophole in, in the practice, the project. Um, so I decided to x-ray proof them by lead lining them. Um, now, of course, this is going to be a conundrum if my work ever travels, you know, internationally, because um, at customs offices, that's not going to be entirely like a cool thing, exactly. that an object has arrived that's been it's been actually even declared an anxiety object and uh, its contents are, are declared undeclarable. It's lead lined and, and it's actually, it's an object that has been toiled over uh, by, by like handmade mark. So um, I'm curious about that. I'm curious about an object that, that can, can possibly be untouchable in a sense, um, which is a major paradox when you're talking about something that's meant to be visual. Can, can you tell me more about how that works, that postmodern context works with the nature of these boxes and, and your practice in general? Well, what's interesting to me is that um, I think uh, initially when someone's reading my work, um, an audience, their, their, first, their first reaction may be that my work is highly modernist. Uh, hyper formalist, um, even tying itself into um, minimalism, which in a lot of ways was kind of like the 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 sort of quintessential modernist sort of statement. Um, but but it should be it, it's important to note that um, I only use that that feature as as a sort of like a ploy to get people to that edge. Of, of looking, of reading, um, but it's, it's, only, it's only a ploy. It's designed to bring someone to the edge of that kind of like place that is modernity and postmodernity. I think my work wants to sort of circle around that, that complicated territory in that I'm interested in some of the things that came of modernism. Mm -hmm. For example, the emotions that are to be triggered, say, through the experience of looking at a Mark Rothko painting or even, say, an, an Agnes Martin painting. And I, of course, identify with, say, the, the expression in a Kandinsky. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, I realized as an early art student that that wasn't enough. I was always more interested in if you could turn those paintings around and see the fingerprints, the, maybe the secret history of the painting. I was much more interested in, and to, to this day I'm much more interested in what goes on behind the scenes. Okay. So it's where my work is. My work is all behind the scenes. It's designed to be the play with the monochrome, but yet once you get close to it you realize it's like it's, it's not a monochrome. It's, it's, a, it's the opposite of what a monochrome is, is attempting to do. So. I'd, I'd like to play with those two worlds though where it's like you walk to the edge of where the monochrome is or the, or the minimalist object and, and the baggage of the vernacular that goes with that but yet opens a whole new world, um, possibly even entertains um, more of an ancient technology, um, allows for like readings that are, that are less specific, um, more even magical. Than, than say the experience of looking at 
you know, a, uh, a, a declaration of color or a declaration of space. The idea of resisting the sort of totality of knowing off against this overriding sense of anxiety, how do you connect the two in your work? Well, anxiety for me is very personal. I, um, I, I see it as, but at the same time, I see it as symptomatic of the culture we live in. Yes. Um, so I know I'm not alone in, in declaring that I've, I've, I play with, tech, play with uh, anxiety and I play with, um, I play with trying to harness it. But I, um, I, I don't think that I necessarily want the, a participation in that. I, I feel like it's a it's a personal thing that I'm I maybe need to get to the bottom of myself and then and then have maybe others complete that for themselves through the example of uh, of what they might experience through my my object making. The notion of an all-encompassing authority over a subject or person is a misperception that has been dispelled in postmodern times. Thus, Gardner's work undermines the totality of knowledge that was indicative of the modern era.